today's episode of OSHA Violations. guys welcome back into the shop for another video today we're just going to be going through some repairs and diagnosing this RAV4 a little bit so we'll take you over and show you kind of what we found so far it's been a couple weeks it feels like a really long time since I filmed the video and to be quite honest with you guys I've just had some personal stuff going on you know and it's been a tough couple weeks nothing related to the channel or anything like that but it's been a tough couple weeks uh, we're getting through it like I said we're dealing with this RAV4 over here as far as the Audi TT goes I am working on the next couple videos for that we have the rear end over on the table now I have an order in to get some of the stuff to service the hull decks and then what I have to decide right now is if I'm going to take the rear end out of this for the drift project and weld the diff put it all back together and then swap assemblies or if I want to take the other one out of the car and weld that. Haven't really decided yet. Um, the white F-150 is going to be going up for sale because the hall dex controller that we need is about $900. So I could take that out of my own pocket or the shop account. I really don't want to do that. So the plan is sell the F-150 and then use that money to buy our controller. We have until the 24th, 25th of May, so about a month right now before we have to have everything wrapped up and ready to go on that. So expect a few videos of that in the coming weeks and then we'll be heading out drift school. So this is actually my younger cousin's RAV and we pulled out this door lock actuator. You can see the window tracking here. We pulled this out to test it because the front doors were not locking and unlocking. You had to manually do it. So that door as well. Back doors were fine. Um, she's actually going to be moving relatively quickly and I want to make sure that this thing is up to snuff because looks like she's going to be going a ways away. So anyway, you can see our little setup here. I was testing this door lock actuator and I made a short on this. But if you're ever fortunate enough to work on these, see if I can get it. You see this little clip here? Normally you just pop these out and they pull out, but on the RAVs, see if it'll focus. Come on. It's actually like barbed on the end here. So if you flip this up and think you're gonna pull it out like any other car, that's not gonna happen. So we got that addressed on there. I'm gonna pull it forward a little bit, get it in the air. We're just gonna check wheel bearings, brakes, um, fluid leaks, all that good stuff. That would have been great. I almost just started this thing and rolled the window down with the window track out of the way because I, yeah, let's get this up in the air. Alright, so first thing we did was the old brake inspection and the push-pull test. See how our ball joints and wheel bearings feel. Uh, we actually did test drive this one and the front hubs are definitely growling a little bit. It's interesting because sometimes these things can be loose. You're like clunk -a clunk -a clunk and you don't, you don't hear anything. But sometimes they make noise and they're not. So it's not good enough just to kind of wiggle them around and see how it feels. So we checked that out. Just kind of gave her a visual inspection. Like I said, this is my cousin's car and my uncle just wants it to get, you know, a real good check over and do some maintenance, do the fluids, all that kind of stuff. I did put an alternator on it last fall. I started looking underneath in the back here and that's where I found a few issues. So let's take a look. All right, so this thing's been a Minnesota car its whole life and it is pretty rusty. You know, the body's not horrible, but you look at certain things like your cam bolts for your alignment. I mean, those things are not going to move. There's there's not gonna be a way to move this. And the older, newer RAVs, if that makes sense, this is a 2003, I believe, but the next generation, the next body style, like 2006 to 10, I believe, there was actually a recall on the arms in the back because it was an adjustment with like a jam nut back here instead of this design. And we would actually like get them to where they were supposed to be and then put these trays on there and epoxy them in place. Not that I think that's the best recall, but those people, it made sense to the engineers and that's why they get more money than me. You look up here, it was always kind of wild to me how these springs sat in there when these cars are in the air. It looks like that mount is all out of whack, but over here, 
you can see that that spring is broken. See that right there? That spring is actually snapped in half up at the top of the mount on the body. So we're gonna be quoting that out. Um, I'll probably price out a set of springs just because you know this one's not broken but it doesn't look great. Another concerning find is this brake line on this side. It's not leaking yet. If I can zoom in a little bit more on that though. You can see if it'll focus. Look at how crusty that thing is. I was touching it and grabbing it and I could actually get some of that material to come off of there. So uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna have to flare a new piece in here and then we could do these rubber hoses at the same time. So this side is definitely worse. This side over here does not look great either though. So then we'll move on up. Doop -a -doop -a -doop. Moving on up, we checked this joint on the drive shaft here. This seems okay. Not a ton of play or anything like that. Up here, then you can see your steering rack and all that other good stuff. Um, not really too many leaks. There is a leak. You can see that the power steering pump is leaking pretty good. See that 10 or 12, I believe it's, that looks like a 10 millimeter. A lot of times just the o-ring on that pipe so we'll probably check that out address that we got a valve cover gasket leak up top got a little bit of a seep from the oil pan we got to see what's going on with this differential here if that's oil dripping from up top or if that's actually a leak from the differential i haven't even looked at the fluid yet so yeah this thing needs some love and we're to put a list together so that's kind of our initial little look over on this rav4 and i'm sure i'll have more info and repair videos on this in the form of shorts especially and maybe even work its way into another video i did want to head over to the table and talk about a few new tools just little things that are pretty handy that i found and a little bit on the audi tt rear end setup like i said we basically have to get a plug and play ecu that's going to control the hull deck system in the rear end of this car and fingers crossed that this all works i have a plan and if it works the way that i think it's going to i think we should have a good time in the audi let's get over to the table and talk about it all right so basically and i did make a short about this and it's hard to get all of the information in one spot in under a minute so these are just the breather hoses um, and then your axles obviously both there and there so this isn't your typical rear end setup so you can see where the drive shaft bolts on and then this is like a little oil filter for the hull deck fluid because basically right here is the hull decks unit and it has a little motor down here and when the ecu from here tells it that we need all wheel drive it will engage the rear wheels because it's a front bias system so i believe don't quote me on this but i believe normally um, when the all-wheel drive is engaged bone stock with the stock ECU and no piggyback in here It's like 70 30 so this system really isn't working too hard and then there's a clutch pack in here So when this activates this little motor and engages these clutch packs then back here is where your gear oil is And you can see there's a spot for one of the breathers and that's what's gonna lock up our rear end So my plan is to take this apart and get the rear gears welded so that we have a welded diff And then I want to take this and put it into the Audi I think I got this one, it's just a spare kind of parts essentially in case we break something. I do not know how much abuse these clutch packs are gonna be able to take, so it's gonna be a learning process. That's why I got a spare one. As far as tools go and things I just wanted to talk about really quickly, you guys all know we got the 12 ton press from Beaver, so that is back there. We got that for free, maybe we'll make a video on it when we have to work with some knuckles or something like that. Pretty decent setup. Um, for detailing stuff, First is this SEM color coat. So you can get this matched to any OEM color. This is just the satin black. Absolute game changer, especially in this part of the country. I did a detail last week and the floors and the carpets had so much salt in them. Steam shampoo extract, steam drill brush extract. I could not get all the salt out. So we got it as clean as we could and then we used this and you can use this on plastics, on carpets, on headliners, any of that kind of stuff. And this is the brand I would recommend. This SEM stuff is absolutely amazing. You pay for it though. And then I gotta give Heart Tools a little shout out. We got this little drill attachment scrubber deal. So if it'll focus, there we go. We just have a little hex bit to fit in your drill and this is Velcro. And then we got the really rough ones down here, the black, this is kind of a medium. And then this one is more of a polishing pad. So that little set was about $12. A couple pliers I wanted to mention. The heart, this is like a needle nose slash wire stripper. And this is actually, you guys, I gotta give it to heart, you know? Their tools are decent quality for something that you find at Walmart. I would compare this to a lot of the Pittsburgh stuff, probably better than the Pittsburgh stuff. Uh, Master Force from Menards, let's say Husky, those kind of tools. So it's not obviously a pro grade tool, but I've been really happy with the heart stuff that I have. And the other pliers, the other players is just like this, I don't know the technical term for it, it's like a flat needle nose, and this one 
is from Doyle. And again, Doyle is from Harbor Freight. It is Taiwan, not China, and lifetime warranty on that. This one you can kind of see if I can get it to focus for you. It's got like a nice crosshatch pattern in there. So this thing's been super useful for little hose clamps if I don't have my dedicated hose clamp pliers, stuff like that. This thing has been pretty nice. Coast is actually in Walmart now, and this is just like a micro pen light. You can see how small that is. My hands are not that big. Um, little LED battery powered non-rechargeable, which everyone likes the rechargeable lights. This doesn't break my heart because if I lose this, it was literally $11. I've had one rechargeable one. I got sick of having to plug it in. Those little USB chargers take forever. And then if I lose it, I'm out like 80 bucks versus $11. Next tool, I need two hands to show you. This is also a $6 heart tools little magnetizer and demagnetizer from Walmart. So I got this screwdriver here just to demonstrate, but this is the demagnetizer end and this is the magnetizer end. Again, six bucks at Walmart, this is so handy. If I touch this bolt right now, it's not gonna pick it up, but then all you do, put it in there. I know, this looks weird. It's all right, you'll be fine. Now, boop, look at that. And then if you wanna demagnetize it, just pull that off of there and then use this side. Now, put this back up here so you can see, it's no longer magnetic. Pretty cool. Last on my list, and we talked about these on a short as well, is these little tight reach, it's like a mini vise or a clamp. You can see it has a little knurled wheel on this end, so you can put a bolt or a nut in here, and then it'll hold it in place, you know, so if you're reaching up like around the back of a cowl or even up in the back of a dash. Comes in a nice three-piece set. This is the smallest one, medium, large. These things I've had a legitimate use for two times now. One, I was trying to put a short up and the lighting was just absolutely horrible, but I was putting a door handle in the Mountaineer and this thing was actually made my life a lot easier. I didn't have to unbolt the window track to get my hand up where the bolt was supposed to be because I was able to get this guy in there. That's what I had for you guys today. I just wanted to make a little update video because it's been a while and we've been busy in the shop, which is great, but you know, this obviously isn't the Audi project. So we'll get the truck finished up. I'm gonna post that for sale. Hopefully that sells really quick so I don't have to pull $800 out of my account and buy that ECU controller to make the Audi do slidey things. So you guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please drop me a comment down below. Like and subscribe if you're not already. And as always, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.